Good morning, New Life family. What a privilege of being together this morning in the house of the Lord. And those that are watching on YouTube, I trust that you will also experience the presence of the Lord this morning. Trusting the Lord for revival. That's our theme for the year. And um, we're just going to build on that also today. Okay. I don't know, somebody lost, lost a paper clip. <laughs> Have you ever started a project, uh, a task, and once you've started it, you realize that it's actually more difficult and there's more to it than what you initially thought? You know, you, you start, I think, I'm thinking of you starting your MBA. And then somewhere along the line, this like becomes overwhelming. And you think, why on earth did I ever start this? You know, I think that often happens when you study. Or when you do a project at work or something that you decide, maybe a renovation to your house or something. And you start off and you're all eager and you, in your mind that, you had the vision that you had initially you realize man there's much to it <laughs> much more to this than what I ever thought before and I think so many times we do that and I believe God is calling us for a big project and we're not going to give up let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you that we can know that this task, this assignment that you have given us as individuals and as an assembly is way bigger than what we can handle. And we know, Lord, that we can draw strength from you. And we know that we will be victorious because you are in it with us. Help us today, Lord, as we sit under the word that we will hear your heart for us as individuals and as an assembly. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. When we consider the account of Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls of Jericho, we realize that there were many physical and spiritual miracles that took place in that whole project. First, we consider the size of the project. The wall that they built was about 4.5 kilometers long, 12, kilometer, uh, 12 meters high, and it was 2.5 meters wide. It's a lot of material that goes into that. And then they had to establish how much of this rebuilding was rubble that needed to be removed and how much needed to be rebuilt what portion of the wall had to be rebuilt so there was a lot of planning that needed to go into that then there were some paradigm shifts as well now we must realize that the people staying in Jerusalem at that stage this was life. This is how it is. They had become content with their condition. It wasn't good. But they had to realize that somebody had to come and tell them, but there's something better. This that you're living in is not the best. Yeah, we are reminded that the miracle of completing a God-sized assignment begins with a miracle of a God-given change in attitude. As we read Nehemiah 3, we see that various people were involved in the rebuilding of the wall. There was a remarkable change of heart of the people who, wo who worked with Nehemiah. Because in Nehemiah, speaking to these people, there's something that happened. 
there was a, a mind shift change in them. They must have realized that this that Nehemiah is telling us is a God project. And there was a change in attitude towards the project. There was a cooperative spirit to work with Nehemiah. It is amazing that these people who had lived in this bad condition for many years can suddenly change heart so quickly. And that is only God that can do that. Suddenly people realize, but this makes sense and I want to be part of it. They could have chosen otherwise. The audience who Nehemiah was speaking to heard God speaking through Nehemiah and realized that this was a God project of which they wanted to be part. We have a project. We have an assignment. And I believe God has said to us, Revival. It's a huge project. But it's something that we can be involved in. And it needs a change of our attitude, of our heart, to step forward and do that. In Nehemiah 3, from verse 1, it says there, Elishep, the high priest, and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which was dedicated and as far as the Tower of Hanal. Hananel. Now, it's interesting to note where they started. The sheep gate was the closest to the temple, because that's where they brought in the sheep to be sacrificed. And they dedicated that. In other words, from the beginning, God was in this project. They dedicated it to God. Furthermore, we notice that they dedicated it twice. They were committed to this. When the task at hand is centered around bringing honor to God, you are already setting your up, yourself up for success. It does not exempt us from any challenges or obstacles along the way to complete the project. It doesn't say, well, you know, now that we dedicate to God, it's just going to be smooth sailing. An attitude to bring glory to God and the desire to do that, to do what is pleasing to God, is also will also ensure that you are doing it for the right reason. So there's two things here. God is in the project. You're not doing it for your own glory. And it can be very tempting to do that. In other words, all of a sudden we see miracles start taking place in this assembly. People healed. Things change. And you may be part of the person praying for somebody who gets healed and you think, eh? Not too bad, eh? And that's the danger. It's not your glory. God gets the honor. And that, I think, is important. Even in this account of Nehemiah, the people realized this project is greater than themselves. They were working to bring honor to God. And we'll see what happens as more people get involved in this. Now, one of the lessons we can learn from this concerning revival, the people that we're dealing with, our community, especially if we focus on Boxburg North to start off with, we know that this area is not in a good state. Drugs are rife here. Poverty is rife. And in certain, if you look at it in comparison to Jerusalem, these people don't know of a better lifestyle. Many of them are comfortable in their mess, in their rubble. We need to go and tell them that there's something better. We need to present to them something of more value. And we can speak as much as we like, but if God is in it, 
He goes before us and changes the hearts and minds of people. Many people who we come into contact with are blinded through the sin and caught up in bondage. And they don't know how to get out of it because nobody's come to offer them a better solution, an alternative solution. Revival requires people who have lived among the rubble their entire lives to be given a new perspective, a new outlook, a new attitude. Sin causes people to become content in the rubble. And I think many of us were there. We were in a position before we came to know the Lord that we were in a mess. But praise the Lord, somebody came along and gave us a solution, which is a livable and eternal one. If we rightly hear God through Nehemiah, we will undertake our own building project. We're not going to apply a physical structure. Our building is changing the lives of people. 1 Peter 2 verse 5 says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. They built with bricks, cement, stone. We will be building with the truth of the word. A physical building consists of walls. Walls are significant. Without walls, there will be no building. What do spiritual walls, walls represent that we will be constructing in people's lives? The first one, walls were for security. Ephesians 4 verse 14 to 16. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by cunning and craftiness of people in their deceit deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head that is Christ. From Him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. The Word of God is living. It's a living Word. It's applicable 2,000 years ago, and it's still applicable today. We will be building people with the truth of the Word. We will be presenting them with the truth so that they can also not be tossed around in doubt, but that they will be built up in the glory of the Lord and that they will mature and bring honor to God. The Word brings steadfastness. And by helping people in their journey, by presenting the Word and coming alongside them and walking around, a road with these people, we can expect change to take place. The second aspect is walls were a witness. Colossians 4 verse 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer anyone. We need to encourage people with our testimonies. Each one of us have had an experience with God. And when we rub shoulders with these people, we need to share those testimonies. Your testimony can be encouragement to somebody else. Your testimony can help somebody in their circumstances. By that you build them up. You help them to come into alignment with God. Testimonies of how God brought you through your circumstances. Testimonies of how God changed your life from where you were. Maybe you'll be speaking to people who 
are in a similar situation that you were. And your testimony can bring encouragement to that person. And I think many of us have seen and experienced that in the past, where we've done that, and you've seen change come. Walls were for, were, were for perspective. Hebrews 5, verse 14. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good and evil. We, will, we need to build people up to see life from God's perspective. If you've been walking all these years and been influenced by the world, that needs to change. We personally are on a constant journey to change. As we get more revelation, as we get more understanding, our lives are changing. And we're going to be dealing with people who need to get that perspective. You need to realize the Word of God is true, that you can apply it and need people to train people in applying the Word, to be trained up, to be equipped, to live a life effectively. You see, revival is not just bringing people to salvation. That's only the first step. We need to walk a journey. We need to disciple people. Because if you disciple people, you'll have an ongoing success. But once it's, if it's only the focus is only to bring salvation, we haven't achieved what God has called us to do. We need to see change taking place in people's minds, in their lives. And that is the task. It's a huge task. It's way bigger than what we can imagine or think. Walls are for distinctiveness. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The people that we will be in contact with, or that we, in your workplace, in society, even families, the people that you will be dealing with need to get an understanding of how to live a godly life. Every, con every person that you come into contact with is a, a divine opportunity to bring a life-changing something to that person. We don't always realize the influence that we do have on people. Maybe just a word of encouragement. Maybe just an ear to listen to. Some people just need to unload the weights that they're carrying. They don't always need advice. They just need somebody to listen. We need to be there for people, to be available. There are different scenarios that we will be facing. Some people will need to hear the word, to get correction. Other people need love. Other people need acceptance. Other people just need to be heard. And that brings healing to people. And each one of us sitting here today has got something to offer. Each one. Each one can just encourage help. Sometimes people need prayer for healing and God will bring those people across your road. Expect God, godly and divine appointments and make a difference. Make a difference. Another significant feature of Nehemiah 3 is that there were many workers and many of them worked or rebuilt the section in front of their homes. If we go to verse 28. Above the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. Next to them, Zabok, son of Ima, made repairs opposite his house. Next to them, Mushelam, son of Berakai, made repairs opposite his living quarters. 
So each one was responsible to rebuild the section in front of his home. Now there's some valuable lessons to be taken from that. Firstly, if they were attacked while rebuilding, they wouldn't run away. Because they're protecting their home at the same time. Second thing, they didn't have to go far to work. They just have to step out the gate. Now I know many of us are working like that from home nowadays. We don't even roll out of bed into the office and then, you know, you don't even get on the road anymore. Okay? So there's, there's wisdom in the way they were building it. The second thing is, they were, they owned the land that they were rebuilding. So that section actually protected their, their property. So they weren't only rebuilding for themselves, they were rebuilding for their descendants to come. They were building to leave a legacy. Now what can we learn from that? In revival, if you at your workplace or at your home, make sure that that circle hears about God. That you become an influencer of people in where God has placed you, in your environment. Okay? Secondly, revival is leaving a better world for our children and our descendants to come. So although we may benefit from revival, it's also for our children. So you're not only working towards this for your own gain. It's for leaving this place a better world for those who, for our descendants. I believe that we must look at this project and as I mentioned last time, you know, are you prepared to do this even though you may not see the results? The results may be after you've passed. But what have you left as a legacy for your children or descendants to come? Are you working towards something? In closing, I believe that we have commenced on a journey which is a God-sized assignment. It's way bigger than what we can handle. But are we trusting God in it? Is our attitude and our heart right? It is bigger than us and we need God's help. We cannot do this in our own strength. We need each other. It's not a one-man show. We need each other. We need each other to be supporting us, but also that we can lean on and trust that the person next to me is also doing his best to bring change. It will require perseverance and sacrifice. Not going to be easy. There are going to be obstacles. There are going to be challenges. It's not just a matter of we step up and everything just happens. But in that, we will be molded. We will be... We will look back one day and say, that was a good thing. I think many of us who have studied or started projects, and you look back and you think, how did I make it? But if you go and sit and you think about it, you came out a better person. It wasn't just a waste. That blood, sweat and tears that you went through made you a better person. And it's not, it, you can apply to every area of your life. If you're working towards something, it's never easy. If David killed a midget, I think he would have been such a great hero. He had to kill a giant. And the project that we're facing is a giant. But God is in it and we can trust him for that. I believe that one day we'll look back and we'll say, by the grace of God, we've achieved this. And he needs all the glory. We cannot take it for ourselves. Are you willing? Are you available?
to be part of this journey, whatever it takes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And Lord, we realize that we have a God-sized assignment. And Lord, that in our own strength, we can do nothing. But Lord, we're excited because you have entrusted this to us. You have deemed us worthy for this assignment. And Lord, I think even as Nehemiah might have looked at this project of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, the more he realized how large the assignment was, the more he realized he needed you. And Lord, this morning I believe we need and we realize to what extent we need you. We need you in our own lives. We need you to guide us, to help us, to direct us. And this morning, Lord, I want to pray for each one who is willing to be part of this journey. If you feel and believe that you want to be part of this journey, I would like you to stand so that we can pray. If you don't want to be part, it's fine. You can stay seated. Don't feel pressured. But if you feel this is something you want to commit to, irrespective of the cost that's going to be involved. So if you're willing to be part of it, to pay that extra sacrifice. I know Cornell wants to stand, but he's sitting because he's playing the piano. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you as an assembly this morning, Lord. And we want to acknowledge your lordship over this project. Lord, we agree this morning and declare your lordship over this project. We want to come under your authority, Lord. We want to submit to your mission for us. Father, I pray that you will help each one to draw closer to you, to take what it, to pay the price. And Lord, thank you that we have a team of people around us. That we do not have to be discouraged. But Lord, that you will comfort us through each other. That we will take hands and go forward with this project. Lord, we need your strength. We pray, Lord, come and fill us with your spirit. Because in our own strength, we can do nothing. We commit ourselves to you this morning. And Lord, we pray your blessing and your favor upon us. Give us godly assignments. Give us godly connections. Give us uh, godly appointments with people so that we can speak into their lives the truth of your word. To build people up. To be people that are in right standing with you. To see this community change. Give us godly strategies, we pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. And um, look for those godly appointments to make a difference. Amen.